The Lord be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi. I'd like you at this time to take a look at what's on the screen. What does it say to me? Do this in memory of me. We bring into this assembly the very nature and the very presence of Christ risen. Let us bow our heads and let us call on Almighty God to be the King of mercy for us, to forgive us, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy forgive us our sin, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father. <laughs> glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace to people. Oh, 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. In memory of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as a memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God most high, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who delivered your foes from your hands. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the reign of God. He healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place. Jesus said to them, Well, give them some food yourselves. And they replied, We have five loaves and two fish. That is all we have unless we ourselves go and buy food for these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. So then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them and broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate, and they were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of Salvation. Oh. 
I couldn't believe on Thursday night when I opened the gospel. It was talking about people being famished. I missed last weekend with you because I was up in, at Quinnipiac College and I went to a seminar on the Great Irish Famine. A prepared homily, right? <laughs> there were about 70 people there from Ireland and there were about 40 of us from the United States. The main reason I went was I wanted to meet my sister and her husband, so we had a good time. A little drink every night, you know, and so on like that. But in our education in Ireland, the people were so ashamed of what happened, they never really talked about it. And it was only at this seminar that I realized that there were many, many famines in Ireland and in Europe itself as well. People were without food. And then the great hunger came in 1845 to 47. And two million Irish people came to the United States and Canada. One million died. It's a little bit like, you know the way New Orleans gets flooded pr practically every five years. But when Katrina came, it was absolute devastation. I began to realize that there was actually a famine in 1901. It wasn't quite as bad. But when you get to 1901, you're talking about my great-grandparents. They were hungry, mostly hungry. Not much food. And I remember, well, shall we say 50 years ago, maybe 60 years ago, we would go to visit my grandmother. And in February and March, she would have eggs to give to the neighbor so the neighbor could give her milk. You see, this is where Lent came from. The people had no food already. So the ashes was the whole idea that we will suffer. We will offer it up. In fact, whenever we brothers would fight with each other, my mother would say, offer it up. <laughs> Didn't seem like the right thing to do, but it was a good prayer. So you had 40 days. In Ireland, we called Mardi Gras Tuesday, we called it Pancake Tuesday. Because we had to take care of all the flour out of the pantry because the mice are going to get it. So that's why you have that whole getting rid of all the food on that night. And then for the next 40 days, you know, what did it tell you? Two small meals and one real meal. What, what else could they have, right? And then by Easter, the lambs are dancing in the fields. The hens are laying eggs. And the cows are giving milk. In that rhythm of life, we all survive. And what you have in this gospel today is that they are in a place of food scarcity. And yet they don't realize, and this is the poignant point that Luke gives to us. They are standing with the bread of life. And they want to go and buy bread. Jesus coaxed them, though, to feed the multitude themselves. And they went, are you out of your mind? 5,000 people, and we have five loaves and two fish. 
But when you are in the company of the bread of life, you will have no need. This is the point that Luke is making. Luke wants us to pick up on the irony of this situation. They are with the bread of life, and yet they are asking where they might buy bread. The key to the story is that they are with the bread of life. And when you are with the bread of life, you, you lack for nothing. All the resources are there because this is the one who is at the foundation of the universe. It is the body of Christ. It is Corpus Christi. We don't need to go anywhere else to buy any provisions. All we need is already here, no matter how hopeless the equation. I want you to look at the, the icon of the Blessed Trinity. You see, Jesus is pointing at his chalice. You see, the Father and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one dressed in green. But I want you to notice there is a space there at that table. That space is for you. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. I will set the banquet before you in the sight of death. For death has no power. So come to the table today. Come to the memorial, which means that we have brought the very presence of Jesus lifelike and present with us through the gift of the Holy Spirit. We will bring up natural, natural gifts from Mother Earth. Bread made from the wheat growing in the hills and growing on the plains. We will bring up crushed grapes flowing with the grace of God that becomes for us the chalice and the blood of everlasting life. Nourished, <laughs> nourished in Christ, we are called to be kind, to be just, to be holy. Later today, I will baptize children. That's why the Easter candle is in the middle of church. And I will place oil, chrism, on the top of their heads to remind them that they are crowned as royal. I will pronounce that they are priests. I will pronounce that they are prophets. I will pronounce that they belong to the reign of God. Because of that anointing, you and I are called to be servants of the Blessed and Holy Trinity. You know our catchphrase when you come in is, enter to worship, exit to serve. Come to the table. We have heard the expression of the Christ at this table of the word. Now, come to the table for your welcome that we may celebrate the resurrection and the glory and the power of Christ through the Holy Spirit, one with the Father, now and always.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, <coughs> light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so we pray. We pray for the needs of God's holy people, for places where famine, places in war, and we pray for the needs of all people in our community. Our response today is, lead us in your love. Lead us in your love. Unite all people in the care of creation and natural resources. We pray. Lead us in your love. You renew by the Holy Spirit, enkindle in us the fire of your love. We pray. Lead us in your love. Inspire us to seek forgiveness with humility. We pray. Lead us in your love. For the children and families who are celebrating baptism this weekend, we pray. Lead us in your love. We remember those who are ill. Linda Nard. And for those who care for them, we pray. Lead us in your love. We remember those who have died. Barbara Germain. And for those who mourn, we pray. Lead us in your love. Lead and guide us that we may become missionaries of your word, that through the gift of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Eucharist be nourished to bring grace, goodness, and peace to our world. Through Christ our Lord. Hi, I'm Norma Cable. Thank you for watching this week's Liturgy of the Word. We invite you to join us in one of our weekend Masses. All are welcome. If you're unable to attend Mass and want to receive the Eucharist, please contact our parish office for a homebound visit from our deacon or one of our lay ministers. God bless you, and we hope to see you soon.